Most people aren't stuck in help desk because it's hard. They're stuck in help desk because of fear or because they refuse to take ownership of anything. That's the problem. And a lot of people online want to blame their situation, their manager, their salary, the certifications they don't have yet. But the truth is a harsh one. If you're still stuck in help desk, it probably has to do with your habits and not your intelligence. Let me show you exactly why you're stuck and more importantly, how the heck you can get out of help desk. So firstly, my name is Jake. I'm a system administrator at an MSP. An MSP is a managed service provider. So we give IT services to other companies. And I did my time at help desk. Before I got into IT, I was a teacher. And then I did four months at tier one. Not a year, not two years, four months. And I'm telling you right away, I was not some special gifted prodigy. I didn't get special treatment. I simply developed a mindset and a skill set that made me valuable for promotion. And this is a mindset that every single promotable IT tech eventually figures out. Now, the problem is that a lot of people will never get there, not because they can't, but because they won't. So in this video, we'll discuss the real reason people stay stuck, the skill stack you need to get out, how long exactly you should stay in help desk, what hiring managers are actually looking for, and the mindset shift that's literally gonna change your career and your life. Let's get into it. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna make the assumption that you're actually stuck in help desk, not that you just started. When you just started, you have to go through the repetitions, you have to learn the things, you're not gonna be a genius when you first start. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of mistakes made and that's just part of the growth journey. So from zero to four months, you're just learning. Now the truth that nobody wants to stay out loud for those people who are stuck is that you're stuck because you refuse to take ownership. You take a ticket and instead of finding a way to see that ticket through to completion, you try and get it off your plate and you place it on somebody else's plate. Maybe you escalate the ticket, maybe you pass it off on a Friday, many other factors. Maybe you ask questions that you could have Googled. Maybe you reassign the ticket to a different queue. You do everything that you're supposed to do except actually learn. Now, in my estimation, this is the number one reason that I see people stay in help desk for years. It's just a lack of ownership. It's not a lack of talent or opportunity. It's just avoidance of responsibility. Now, when I got hired and to this day, I watch it happen every single day. Someone gets a permissions issue. Oh, that looks like a weird AD issue. Let me escalate. Someone has a weird networking error. Yeah, I don't touch networking. Network team. Device enrollment problem. Ah, oh, this is an Intune thing. Intune is managed by system administrators. I'm going to escalate. Every time you say, this is not my area, you're literally carving out your own prison. Because here's the truth. System administrators and network engineers get promoted because they take responsibility for things. If you're scared of certain tickets now, why would your company trust you with something bigger later? So how can you be the opposite of this person? The answer to that is always look for tickets that you're uncomfortable taking until there are no tickets you're uncomfortable taking. This is, of course, an uncomfortable thing to do. We get in a job. We want to be comfortable. We want to do the things that we're good at. The second you get good at doing something, you need to stop doing it and do something more difficult. It's a very difficult mindset to adopt, but you're going to realize if you do what is easy, your life will be hard. If you do what is hard, your life will be easy. It's one of the paradoxes of life. Now, people often ask why or how I moved so fast. And to be honest, my primary motivation was I wanted to get the heck out of the call queue. I also knew that I wanted more responsibility and I wanted more money. Those were my primary motivators. When I got into IT and decided to transition into IT, I was like, I want to make $70,000 at least. I'm thankful I was able to do that after four months. And I wasn't passionate about help desk. I was just there to get my feet wet and then climb. And again, I treated those tickets like repetitions in the gym. Every ticket that I was taking was an opportunity to get get better in some domain. Now, instead of escalating tickets, I would reach out to tier twos and system administrators and system engineers and say, hey, I have this ticket. It looks like this X, Y, Z. I know this is supposed to be escalated, but can I do it? Or if it did have to get escalated, it was, hey, can I watch you do this so that I know what to do when I get up there? And that mindset of taking ownership and actually just trying to solve issues that maybe even are way outside of your domain leveled me up as a tech really fast. So what actual skill set do you need to escape help desk? You do not have to be sysadmin ready right when you become a sysadmin. Admin. You're never going to be ready for something that you don't know about, but you do need a minimal technical baseline. This is going to assure to the higher ups that you're not just clicking buttons, resetting passwords, and you know nothing else about system architecture or how things work together. Of course, you have to have Active Directory fundamentals. You need to understand users, groups, OUs, permissions, group policies, at least reading group policies. If you don't understand how AD works and is organized and should be organized, you're not going to move up. Secondly, the thing that scares people most in all of IT is subnetting and networking basics. This is the magic key. 
Networking, in my estimation, was the number one thing that moved me up from tier one to system administrator. After getting the CCNA, I felt so much more confident and I felt like I could really understand and solve network problems and it's 10x me as a sysadmin as well. So in terms of network troubleshooting, it's not just can I ping Google, it's how do I understand client side DNS, public DNS, and internal DNS, and just general DNS resolution. Do I know what default gateways are? Do I know what VLANs are and what they do? Do I know what DHCP is and how it works? Can I use traceroute logic or hybrid environment troubleshooting and gather data to be able to inform my decisions? These are all important things for moving up. On the note of hybrid troubleshooting, you gotta have the basics of Microsoft 365 and cloud as well. User creation, licensing, mail flow, MFA problems. This is gonna be integral to any T2 or T3 role. And if you understand these four things well, you're already better than 80 to 90% of help desk. And then you add ownership and responsibility on top of that, and all of a sudden, you're the most promotable guy or girl in the building. Now let's also discuss certifications that are actually gonna matter. Of course, Security Plus is important. A Plus, you probably wanna get to get your foot in the door. But the most important certs in my my estimation that you can get to move you from tier one to tier two or sysadmin is going to be network plus and CCNA the two networking certs. Again, these certs are gonna force you to learn how networks actually work. And once you understand traffic flow and how a network works, you all of a sudden become really valuable because the vast majority of IT issues boil down to some networking issue. And if you wanna go to cloud, cyber, sysadmin, uh, network engineer, of course, all of this is gonna start with the CCNA fundamentals. You don't need a giant cert stack or CCNP or CISSP or a huge home lab or all of this architecture knowledge. You just gotta understand networking basics. So how long should you actually stay in help desk. The biggest lie in my estimation that's told to people is that you should do help desk one to two years before moving up. I absolutely think you can do it way quicker. I think you can learn everything you need to learn in four to six months to be ready for a system administrator position. Now, this is not to say that the opportunity is automatically just gonna show up. Sometimes you gotta wait from that six to 12 month period just for a job spot to open. But if you're doing those repetitions, you're taking the uncomfortable tickets, you're taking ownership over things, you're learning with other teams, by six months, you're gonna be at a point where you're like, I'm ready, I'm sick of resetting passwords and taking calls to fix Karen's printer. Okay, so again, so the main things that promotable techs do differently, they take ownership fully, never dumping tickets on other people and working with other teams to actually resolve issues. They troubleshoot deeply. You need to not ask questions that are easily Googleable. Don't go to your system administrator and ask them, what is a shared mailbox? That's the most Googleable question you could ever possibly ask. Even things like simple commands, the best tier one techs that ask me questions are like, hey Jake, I have this issue. This is what I'm thinking to do. What do you think? And when you can clearly state an issue and say what your plan is to fix it, all I have to do is review it and be like, man, you're ready to be a T2, you know, come on up. Now, another thing that should be noted is that you have to be comfortable with being wrong and learning in public. You have to ask questions to people. You're gonna ask dumb questions. A lot of times I will preface a question with, I know I'm an idiot, but explain this to me. Not an easily Googleable question, but a question that's like, you know, maybe would seem dumb to somebody who's super experienced. That's part of the growth process. You gotta have those core technical fundamentals. You have to volunteer for complexity and you have to move quickly and with confidence. So there are three primary paths out of help desk. First is sysadmin. I think this is the most natural next step. Second is gonna be networking. If you really wanna be a network person, you might be lucky enough to get out of help desk and go straight into a network admin position, either at your company or at another company. At my company, that's less common. Usually you're gonna go system administrator for a bit and then try and pivot to networking. And then third is cybersecurity. You must know, cybersecurity is extremely competitive. You're gonna want an insane cert stack, probably a bachelor's and or master's degree in order to do something like that. So again, you have to have this fundamental mindset shift that's gonna change your career. Help desk is just a stepping stone. It's not a career decision. And even though you can get comfortable on the job, you have to constantly be taking those tickets that make you uncomfortable. You have to take responsibility for issues. You have to work closely with teams and ask good questions and not ask easily Googleable or GPTable questions. And then you have to learn in public and you got to show your progress. If you work in IT, you know that everything is about metrics. You got to be up at the top range of the metrics. If you're not willing to be competitive and work yourself in order to get to that position, it's going to be tough to move up either way. Guys, I made this video not to tell you, oh, this is, you know, you're so terrible. Don't do this. Don't do that. Of course, it's okay to take a day off here and there. But understanding the types of traits that make people successful in an industry is something that can take you from being where you don't want to be to being where you want to be way faster than you probably thought you could get there. The truth is 
It doesn't take one to two years to get out of help desk. It takes four to 12 months, and that's just depending on the opening of a position. I wish you guys the absolute best in your move up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I respond to every single one on every single video. Thanks so much for the support lately. Appreciate y'all. Be safe, be smart, make some good decisions, and good luck taking ownership and responsibility over those tickets and moving out of tier one help desk. Bye.